thank you all for joining me and a blessed 11 11 11 portal this is a very very special evening as the divine 11 11 11 portal will be opening for all of 5d 4d 3d existence I am really looking forward to getting into some 5D tonight with some meditations, and I've kind of been trying to stay in 5D for like the past two days. I've had a long hiatus from children, so I've been focusing on healing myself, definitely getting some old womb wounds cleared. Um, there's more that needs done with that, so I'm going to be doing the ultraviolet angel call-in again tonight. I was a bit distracted with my twin flames bullshit. Last night when I did it, I still managed to get some feeling with it, but I believe now with full concentration it can be completely intense and how it's meant to be done and have very, very um, heavy weight lifted off of my soul and body. I'm currently filling my diffuser with water. That was me trying to get another water bottle. I had put some hydro CBD drops in my water bottle. Forgot. And then use that water bottle to fill up my diffuser. So I hope this CBD is able to be diffused. Also, I'm using gentle baby oil. From Young Living. Check out my hashtag. Young Living Essential Oils with Erica. I've also used some clary sage on my in my belly button to kind of fix the hormones going in through there. Sensation to get your sacral chakra waking up. My sacral chakra is the murkiest of all chakras, not surprisingly, as I have been through very much trauma, not only in this life, but my past life. And it all needs to be clear. So for you goddesses out there who are doing the same thing as I am, you understand I've been listening to Dr. Amanda Noel pretty much all day. Um, I was very disappointed that I signed up for, well, I don't know if I signed up. Supposedly, there was a live ritual ceremony that she was doing for the 11.11.11 portal in Bali, and... I wanted to tune into that live. I had everything planned. I kept checking my clock for it. Um, and every way I tried to access it, it said that the servers were full. So I'm not going to let that derail me from my self-healing experience is what I need to do tonight with the uh, clearing of all blockages, cutting of all cords. Those of you who are twin flames may already know there's a possibility that there is a false twin flame and it's, it's a controversial topic, but I mean, you know, people have never known about this kind of thing. But now more people are. And Amanda Noel talks a lot about that, too. And um, 
I need to get in touch with her about some more one-on-one -on -one trainings and um, what it all comes down to is your twin is within and you have to learn to love yourself so I'm going to do that I've got my sacral chakra tea I'm drinking I have some rosé some hay lots of oils gonna be doing the damn thing tonight doing the damn thing um, I've been getting lots of guidance from people on the internet And the moon is currently in waxing crescent phase. So it's still a great time to set those new moon intentions um, and really, really reaffirm that to yourself. Um, new moon was back on the 7th, 8th, 9th. And I set my intentions of learning to love myself so that my entire life would change before me with ease and letting go of fear. Don't fear change, change fear. Listening to lots of positive affirmations. Just close your eyes and picture yourself in the universe. Stars around you. Or keep your eyes open. Some, some people are good enough to see their light flashes in the, in the day or the night. Sometimes when it's nighttime and dark, I like to keep my eyes open a little bit as well as my third eye. Get there comfortable with yourself and just repeat some affirmations that you've been listening to and really believe them. I am worthy of a loving relationship with a man who truly wants to bask in my essence and serve me on a soul level so that I can open up my feminine side and feel safe to do so. It's been said that when you have abusive relationships that you don't feel safe and that's so true and you might think something's wrong with you physically, but in reality, it's what you're exposing yourself to. So, that's also something to think about when you're trying to reach into yourself. Just tell yourself, I am worthy of a loving life. I am beautiful. And then you got to believe it. I still say these things and I, I feel that I do not quite believe. And I'm not sure why that is. But there is certain traumas that I must clear in order to really feel those affirmations that I'm able to speak. It's like when I got married but wasn't supposed to get married and I could speak that, but I did not feel it. I knew it was wrong. So my voice was able to speak the words, and I can't even remember what the words were, but it was a blur. And, of course, try to get that annulled the next day, but that didn't happen. 
Um, that's like a whole nother like three hour long thing. Anyways, your voice can speak words for you if they're coming through your head. Your throat chakra can speak words for you when it's coming through your heart chakra, which is so closely connected with the sacral chakra, otherwise known as your sex chakra. And girl, you got to get back your pussy power. Also known as the power of the divine feminine. If you're a fan of my videos, I suggest that you really start tapping into Dr. Amanda Noel's Yoni Healing Meditations. Also stuff that you can search on YouTube, but they don't have it listed when you're scrolling because it's inappropriate for some. You can look up pussy power activations and she spells it P U dollar sign dollar sign Y. And that will lead you to one thing after another about diving deep into healing your womb trauma that you have been born with, that's been carried on through other lives, and from experiences that you have had on the 3D Earth plane. Once that is cleared... You're able to receive the true twin flame love that is the ecstasy that you came here to have. You can be love. You are love. And your divine masculine will want to... be intoxicated with that. You can heal yourself. And it's great to have a coach that can tell you kind of what to do. To take steps. Um, someone on Instagram told me about a great practice which I did last night and if you're looking to heal yourself you may wish to do this practice as well just one little tip there sometimes when you watch some of my videos that are just talking videos um, you may wish to have your pen and paper with you This lady said, ask yourself these three questions. And are these what's holding you back? And I was trying to figure out what is holding me back? What is holding me back from fully loving myself and letting a person leave my, um, you know, like, I just want to let this, let this shit go, but such heavy shit, you know, really freaking heavy shit that you deal with when you do meet this twin flame out of nowhere that just literally disrupts your life. And then you're like, is it my twin flame or is it my karmic? Sometimes a false twin flame. And sometimes you don't know. And I think he is my twin flame. All signs pointed to that, but now you don't know. And I have to say, you know what? I don't care. I want my love. I want my, I want my, um, 
I, I don't really know if I should say true love or if I want my true twin. Um, that's what I want in my life. And if it's, if you're not giving me that feeling, then you have to basically go. I have to surrender this, whether it's a twin flame or not. If it's meant to be, it'll be meant to be. And when you're trying to heal that twin flame union, you have to know that you're going to be fine either way. But once you love yourself, that's when your twin's going to appear. So things that must be let go of before you can get to that point. Question one, are you afraid of being alone? Question two, are you afraid of what people will think? Question three, are you afraid of having a broken home for your kids? So these were questions I was asked. And she said, well, now write down three things that are the exact opposite of those questions. So for are you afraid of being alone, I wrote, being alone is a good time to connect to your true self, do meditation, yoga, journaling, and self-care. Number two of are you afraid of what people think, I wrote, most people in person are non-judgmental friendly, helpful, and have full of love to offer. And that has been my experience. I have had kinder experiences with strangers and people on the internet than I have ever had in a home life or a relationship life. Um... I asked him, this is something that popped up. I asked him once about that. Well, they said, oh, well, they don't really know you. And I think what it has been is no. They, they are open to seeing me and knowing me. And you don't know me. These men don't bother to care about knowing you or who you are, what you need. You know, they don't. They're just not even, they're so vibrationally low that it's like they have no ability. And that's an abusive statement, I think. And I don't believe it's true. I used to believe that's true. And I see that. Um, I have not been around very nice people or people that have cared about me. So third question, are you afraid of having your kids a broken home? And for number three, it was hard for me to come up with an opposite response to that because my answer was yes. Yes, I am afraid of my kids having a broken home, but in reality, they already do have one. And then a, a lot of ways they don't. Um, we're here. I'm always here. I've never left. Even though there's been a couple father figures who have left, I have never, I will never, they all have each other. Uh, sometimes they do get some breaks if dads take kids, but I kind of look at that as a good way to have individual alone time with each kid or a couple at a time. Um, and I think that works out nicely too. So I think it's not necessarily that it's a broken home. I think it's a home that has extended family and we just kind of consider the dad's extended family, um, or just dropping the term extended and just calling everybody family because that's how things can be. Um, so 
my answer was, it's okay to be broken, with a question mark. Um, because we're here, and this was never by any choosing, although, I mean, it wasn't, apparently it was. When you get into more of the uh, spiritual side of getting really educated about stuff when you come to earth you literally pick your life and your struggles and shit but sometimes free will also comes into play and you can draw out patterns of your life for longer than necessary because of the free will but it all helps to shape you so being a single mother to fatherless children and then being a single mother to children with fathers two completely different lifestyles. And quite frankly, I am enjoying the separation and the break. Um, so there's no reason to fear that. I guess a long time ago I would have been crying and oh my God, oh my God. A night away from my beloved child. But when there is a responsible counterpart to take some of that off of your shoulders, um, that's a good thing. So if my husband and my little starseed angel, um, they're having a great time. He is a very good dad. Um when he's got his kid alone. Uh, so that'll be good. I think separation can be a good thing. Um, and not everybody has to have a traditional relationship, I suppose. Or, um, you know, it's nice to be able to be open to talking to other people who may offer different perspectives. Um, you know, somebody told me I looked glorious. I've never heard that before. So it's nice to open yourself up to some, some new uh, compliments from friends that you may never have talked to if you were kind of locked down in a relationship that wasn't making you feel that way. I think when somebody said I looked glorious, I think I felt glorious when I heard that. It's a good way to feel. And I am so looking forward to clearing out my blocks so that one day I may look in the eyes of my lover and he will speak the words into me. And I will really, truly feel that way. And his actions will back it up. So, that's some twin flame separation, karmic twin, divine feminine talk. getting cold in Ohio. I still went out there though. It was amazing. Some of you who like to follow my day and learn a few things may wish to subscribe or follow whatever you call it on Instagram because a lot of times I I'm posting on social media, but I'm not really scrolling or on social media. I'll be doing what I'm doing, and then I just share a pic, and then that's it. Then I'm back to what I'm doing. So sometimes I don't respond to people um, in comments um, unless I'm when I'm back on there. But um, Sometimes I just do Instagram blasts where I just show like different highlights of what I'm doing and 
different oils I'm using at the time. That way you guys can know what's going to help you in the future. Um, a big one that they're always saying is use your rose oil, use your rose oil. Um, because that really helps invoke love. And I actually don't have the rose oil yet, but it is something I want so very much. And, um, I haven't decided that I was quite worth spending the money on. And I just should probably just tell myself, you know what, you are worth it. But my thing has always been, you know what I want? I want, um... A guy to buy that for me I want to have a man who wants to buy me the things that I want instead of making me have to pay for my own shit because I deserve to be spoiled and treated like I am a beautiful goddess woman you know um, I've been taking care of myself for quite a long time whilst in a marriage, and I'm just not down with that shit. Um, but for certain, get some rose oil, and you might want to... I talk a lot about my oils um, on Facebook more on my business page, and the name of that page is... Young Living Essential Oils with Erica. But there really is an oil for everything. Um, I do need the rose oil. I really do. Um, you know, but if you're, you know, if you don't have the rose oil yet... There's other ways around that. Um, real roses, of course. Uh, rose quartz. I do have a couple um, facial sprays and um, essential oil sprays that contain rose oil but are not the pure oil. Um, and those I use... It's like having a piece of the real thing. You know, it's like eating crumbs. It's like eating the crumbs that uh, my, what I think is my karmic twin would try to keep me sustained on. Like, no, no, I don't need to nibble up the crumbs you throw down at me. Okay, motherfucker. You need to be giving me the big fat hog of shit and then... Letting me decide what I'm fucking leaving for you. You know. So I am really, really ready to leave this fucking abusive, neglectful relationship bullshit behind me. And those are the thoughts I'm going to be drilling into my head tonight. And those are the affirmations that I'm going to have to keep saying over and over again. So if you are a twin flame collective female that is trying to love yourself and clear yourself of all of your blockages and, and just bad freaking cycles, now is the time. It is 11, 11, 11. And they get that from 2018, 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 8, they say equals 11. I haven't done the math, so I don't know, nor have I calculated it. I'm just trusting what they say. I've been doing some spells lately cleansing bath rituals just do it just do that stuff I'm basically on like a bender of spiritual healing as I feel like I've seriously just gotten to be on a bender and it's not over yet I'm enjoying it and I'm going to continue to clear so if you are with me Go ahead and share anything positive and loving in the comments or hit the like button, maybe even the subscribe button. Mm. 
moon magic, y'all. Do it.